show you how to knit this uh, mitten Christmas ornament, which is a very quick and easy pattern that's very adorable, great to make for holiday ornaments, and is also really good practice for the make one left and make one right. We are just going to need a little bit of worsted weight yarn, size three and five needles. They don't have to be double pointed. They could be straight or circular. A darning needle and a pair of scissors. Start with the smaller of the two needles, the size three, and you're going to tie a slip knot and then use the long tail cast on method. Total, you need 24 cast on stitches. The ornament is knit starting at the cuff and it's back and forth so you just turn at the end of every row and for the first six rows you're just going to knit purl knit purl so you're making a one by one rib for the first six rows at the end of row one I'm just going to turn my work and again knit purl knit purl all the way across and I'll keep doing that until I've completed six rows just like that after six rows of one by one rib, you then turn your work and then take your larger needle, size five, and you're going to purl across the row. Okay, after purling, remember to take your second smaller needle and set it aside. So you're done with that. You should now have both of your size five needles. Starting on row eight, we're going to knit 11 and then we're going to make one left. And there's a whole video on the Cushion of Joy site for how to do this. Just as a reminder, you put the left needle into the bar in between the needles, and then you're going to knit through the back loop. Now you're going to knit two, and now you're going to make one right. So every time we make one, we're adding a stitch onto the needle. To make one right, you take your left needle on the same bar, but you pick it up from behind the stitch, and then you knit into the front loop as you normally would. It's a little tight though, so I usually use my thumb to help make some room. And now you knit across to the end of the row. Whoops. So now we will have increased this row by two stitches. We had 24 stitches before, and now we have 26 stitches at the end of this row. You're going to continue to just follow your pattern now. So on the next side, as we flip it over, we'll purl, and then the side after that will be another increase row. And we're going to continue to do that uh, through row 12 when we have uh, 30 stitches on the needle. On row 13, you're going to purl 18 of the stitches. When you finish, you'll have your 18 purl stitches on the right and you should have 12 unworked stitches on the left. You're then going to turn your work and you're going to knit six stitches. You're gonna turn again and you're going to purl those six stitches in the middle. So here we are making the thumb. All right, and now we're going to knit two together three times. So you remember for the two, you hold two stitches together, insert the right needle, wrap your yarn around, and pull the loop through both. So you're essentially knitting two at the exact same time. And this will decrease a stitch. We're gonna do it again. And one more time. So now we've just decreased the three little thumb stitches. So if we look here, we have just kind of created the little thumb space. Now we're going to cut off a stretch of yarn. And thread it on the darning needle. And you're going to use your needle to slip the yarn through the three stitches that you just knit two together. And pull it through, and then we will come back and sew that off later. I'm just gonna set that needle aside for now. Come over here, 
And now, holding it with the purl side facing us, we're going to reconnect the yarn. To do that, we insert the right needle into the first purl stitch, getting ready to purl. And then you just fold your yarn in half and put that loop over your right hand needle and pull it through like you normally would to purl. And then you're ready to go all the way across that row. So you're really finishing that purl row. You're going to turn like usual and we are going to knit all the way across. You can kind of tug on that little yarn in the middle to make sure your stitches are tight like they're supposed to be. And you're going to try to close up any gap that might have existed in between those two sections where we pulled out the thumb stitches. So just kind of disregard that thumb, just work around it. So that was my stitch that I where I added the yarn, you can see it's a little bit loose, and right here is where we want to make sure um, there's no gap in between the stitch where I added, reattached the working yarn and the next two stitches. Think about those being just a little bit snug to help close up any, there's still going to be a hole at the base of the thumb, but it will help you make it easier for it to be tidy. Now you're just going to, that was a knit row, you're going to do a purl row, knit row, purl row. So those are rows 18 through 20 on the pattern. In row 21, we're going to knit two together and then knit one. And continue that all the way across. Knit two together and knit one. And then another purl row. Finally, we're going to knit two together all the way across. Here I am at the end. I have eight stitches left and I'm going to cut off. This time I'm going to leave probably a couple of feet. I want enough room, enough yarn left to sew my mitten together and then sew the little chain loop for hanging it on the Christmas tree. So I'm going to leave enough yarn to do both of those things. Again, I'm going to thread my darning needle and then move all the stitches I just knit. I'm just going to slip them right onto the darning needle as a really simple bind off. And pull it all the way through. Then you can kind of cinch it up a little bit. The top of the mitten, you can start to see it coming together as an adorable little mitten. From here, we're going to use a mattress stitch to close it. So I like to get that little, that first loop is always a little gappy. So I like to put my yarn into there and into the stitch right beside it. Oops, pull through to help close that up at the top. Then you're going to use the mattress stitch to connect the two edges all the way down. And you do that, you're going to go in and out of the little bar in between stitches. So I pull this apart, you can kind of start to see where those little bars are. And you want, this is the selvage edge right here, so you want the first set of those bars after the selvage edge. So right now I'm coming from the right side so I'm going to look for that first bar on the left, and it's right in there. So I'm going to go top down, and then I'm going to come over and find its counterpart on the right, which is right here. I'm going to go top down again, and then 
back to the other side. You have to kind of jog over a little bit here because this was the other row where we did the knit two together. So you have to kind of get back into that row that's all the way at the edge. And here's my next bar. And after we do just a couple of more, you'll be able to see how it pulls it shut. So there's where we came out. Here's our next horizontal bar. Do one more. Okay, so you start to see we get just the, the back and forth of those stitches, but then when we pull them tight, it just cinches those two rows together. So you just end up with a very seamless, um, a seamless join. The mattress stitch just uh, disappears down into the middle. So we're gonna continue to do that all the way down to the bottom. So here I am at the end, and I am just going to tie a knot between my initial cast on tail and the piece I was just sewing with. Oops, left over right, right over left. And then I'm going to take my crochet hook and I'm going to go just, just poke it in anywhere, kind of in that area. And I'm just going to chain if you're a knitter and not a crocheter, you just wrap the yarn around the crochet hook and pull it through the loop. I kind of pinch the chain I'm making with my left thumb and middle finger and keep scooching it up. And go until you have about four inches. This part is art, not science. Go until it's the length you like. You could also make two mittens and then attach them with a string here that would, would hang over the tree, would also be cute. And then I'm going to attach them to the end, trying not to twist them. And to finish it off, you just poke in again to wherever you can make a hole. Get one last yarn to pull through. And then make one more chain, and that time you're going to pull it all the way out. Your loop. So those are all then ends that you need to just weave in. Then we're going to come back and we're going to also sew this little thumb shut. So to do that, thread our needle again. So you're going to cinch up the little top to close it just like we did the top of the mitten. And then you're going to mattress stitch closed again um, that little thumb area just like we did before. When you get here to the end, you can just go through one time and then uh, you may want to turn it inside out. because There's always a bit of a hole. So we're going to poke the needle through. You can see there's just a little bit of a hole there that's very normal. And so once it's closed, I just kind of whip stitch through a couple of places to help tie it shut. And then this is the extra yarn from where we cast on in the middle. I take those two pieces and I tie them together. And then weave in those ends as well. There you have your finished mitten ready to hang on the Christmas tree. I hope that was fun and that you'll check out more patterns on the Cushion of Joy website. Happy knitting!